Okay, so in this video, we want to factor and simplify as much as possible the following difference of terms, right? We have this term, which is fully factored, minus this other term, which is also fully factored. So let's see if we can factor from this difference of terms common factors. Well, there's an obvious one, right? x to the 8, multiply both the first and second term. So we can factor x to the 8. And we take it away from the first term, so there's nothing left in this case. Same for the second term. Another common factor between the first and second term is x squared plus 1. There are four of those in the first case and only three in the second case. So the best we can do is factor from both terms and x squared plus 1 cubed. Well, here in the second term, there were exactly three of those terms. We factored all of them, so there's nothing left of this term. We have to be careful, though, in the first, there were four factors of x squared plus 1. We took away only three, so therefore there's one left over. So we have a remaining x squared plus 1 factor in the first term, but not in the second. And there's also another factor that is x plus 13, both in the first and second terms. x plus 13 shows up six times in the first factor, seven times in the second factor, so the best we can do is factor x plus 13 six times. Well, there were six factors of x plus 13 in the first term. We took everything away, so this term is gone. In the second, there were seven of those factors. We only took away six, so there's one left over. So there's a single x squared plus 1 left over in the first term, and a single x plus 13 left over in the second term. Well, clearly now, the first and second term no longer have common factors, so we can open up our brackets and write the remaining terms. So from the first term, all that remains is the x squared plus 1 minus, and here be careful, the negative applies to the entire expression, so you have to open up your brackets, minus, and the only term left over is a single x plus 13. So this completes the first step. We factored everything we could from the initial difference of terms, so the leftover expression has no common factor. But what if we combine and simplify? We have, as we will see, a very simple degree 2 polynomial, and perhaps we can factor this further. Let's see if this is possible. So if you perform the subtraction, well, you're going to have your single x squared minus x, looking now at the constant terms, 1 minus 13 is negative 12. So now we have a single leftover that is a quadratic polynomial, and again we can factor, hopefully by inspection, thinking of the product in some trick. We need two real numbers whose product is negative 12 and whose sum is negative 1. That is, of course, negative 4 and 3. The product of negative 4 and 3 is negative 12. The sum of negative 4 and 3 is negative 1. So this factors as x minus 4 times x plus 3. And now we have a complete factorization of the initial difference of terms.